Hi everybody, Amy here for Homebody and another installment of What the Body Knows. This month, we're talking about the relationship between the alignment of the ribs and the alignment of the pelvis and how they correlate to help the core stay strong. So what I mean by that is the space between ribs and pelvis encompasses the core muscles of the transverse and the spine muscles behind them. And the combination of spine and core activating properly and appropriately will help us balance the ribs over the pelvis. Not only that, but by finding balance in our bony structures, we can find more core strength and more back support. By understanding how we can rotate our rib cage and our pelvis around each other, we understand the relationship of the, the core in the front and the core in the back. And so not only are we gonna find a sense of posture by balancing ribs over pelvis, but we're also gonna figure out how do we move our spine in order to move our ribs or our pelvis? And what's the relationship between these two moving structures Sometimes that cause a lot of spine compression, right? So we're gonna find a way to get out of that uh, spine compression and find more length, find more width in the body to feel the fullness of our rib cage and our pelvis. And to also, instead of flatten our body when we round, find the depth front to back inside of our curves. For this workout, you will need a bolster or a cushion of some kind that has some length to it. You could use a rolled up yoga mat, you could use a long towel, anything like that. Maybe even a, a larger ball that you can lay yourself on top of. And I'll show you that in the very first sequence. Um, if you don't have anything like that, you also could just lie flat on the belly when it comes time for that first exercise. No worries if you don't. You might also like to use a block or a uh, cushion of some kind, maybe even a rolled up towel again, if when you lie flat on your back, you don't feel comfortable. If there's some tightness in your back that prevents you from feeling restful and comfortable when lying flat on your back. Lastly, you might like a stool or chair for some of the seated work that we do on the floor. So if you're not, super comfortable sitting upright. You can either use a cushion under your sitting bones or you could sit all the way up on a chair if those hamstrings feel really tight and it's not comfortable to have your legs out in front of you. I'm really excited to share this workout with you and I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Begin by laying your bolster lengthwise on your mat coming over top of it and laying down from your collarbones to your pubic bone. Get comfortable. Make sure you're right in the center. Your head will fall over the top of the bolster. Remember, you can also use a rolled up yoga mat here. And your legs will splay out from the end of the bolster. You could rest your head in your hands and then start to breathe. With your midline centered over the bolster, your right and your left sides should pour, feeling your width, feeling your dimensionality. And notice how you breathe, taking nice, slow, deep breaths. Seeing if you can breathe all the way down into the base of your pelvis, up into your shoulders and chest. Now I'm gonna ask you to breathe front to back. So breathing into your front and your back space. And as you exhale, letting them condense together. And then breathing into your width, your right and your left. And then breathing into your length from head to tail. Noticing if those three directions feel slightly different inside your body.
Just feeling the sense of your back body and its width, how that is getting more and more open as we lay here, as you breathe. If at any time this is not comfortable for you, find a version of this that is, and that might be just lying on your belly on a bed or something just as comfortable. But we'll come off now. You'll just press into your hands, reach your hips back and roll up to sitting. You can remove the bolster or prop from your mat. And now we're gonna come lying on our back. So start by lying on your side, rolling onto your back. That's a really nice, safe way for your head, your neck and your core. And so as you come to your mat, we are gonna make sure that if you don't feel comfortable flat, you can put a block underneath you or a uh, pillow or some kind of lift under your pelvis. And that usually feels better if you are uncomfortable flat. We're gonna do some of the same dimensional breathing we did on the bolster. So place your hands on the front of your chest, take that front to back breath, and then hands on the sides of your ribs, the side to side breath. And then one hand on your heart, one hand on your low belly, breathing up and down the length of your breath. And again, feeling the front backness, the side sideness. And the up and downness of your body. Now bringing your hands to your low belly, right between your hip points. Your fingertips can rest on your pubic bones. And we're gonna breathe now down into this area of the low abdominals as you inhale, expanding and exhaling, trying to condense this area backward toward the spine, not with a lot of gripping and tightening, but just a sense of hollowing. Check out my video on how to engage your deep core abdominals if you haven't done so already. And now we're gonna rock the pelvis. So I've got one hand on my chest, one hand on my low belly, and I wanna just feel into that length as I rock. And then I wanna put my hands on my two hip points and feel the width of my pelvis rocking. So with the hands on the chest and the pelvis, I can feel the length of my body rocking, the shortening in the front, the lengthening in the back, and the shortening in the back, lengthening in the front. And when I put my hands on my hip bones, I can feel the width remaining, whether I rock back or whether I rock forward. I'm trying to do this without gripping the hip flexors, but engaging the deep core to move spine and pelvis. Next, we're gonna lay our hands by our sides and we're gonna roll the pelvis up off of the mat. So if you're familiar with bridging, you're gonna roll up to a high bridge. And from here, we're gonna rotate the pelvis around the rib cage. So far, we've been rocking the pelvis toward and away from the ribs. And now we're gonna rotate the pelvis. Seeing if you can keep your ribs quiet, your shoulders open, your head and neck long. You can roll back down, taking a break. We're gonna do this again. You're gonna to try to keep your knees over your ankles when you rotate your pelvis. And imagine like you're stair-stepping, so pressing into your left foot lifts your left hip higher, and your right foot lifts your right hip higher. And as you go back and forth and press into one foot more firmly, notice if that activates your glutes and hamstrings, which is what we want. Take a break, rolling back down. Let's roll over to our sides, coming up to sitting, and we're gonna grab our bolster again, and again, using a rolled up towel or pillow, 
We're gonna lie our rib cage on this now. So finding your mid rib cage, and I'm gonna put my hands on my hips and just notice I've got a little lift of the body. I'm on a diagonal. And I'm gonna focus now on the ribs moving around the pelvis. All this time we've been working on the pelvis, rocking around the ribs. Now, can you rotate your rib cage up and over your prop, whatever it is? You could use a ball, you can use a cushion. And seeing if you can find the rotation of your ribs without your pelvis moving. So we're trying to isolate these parts. layer in your breathing and your deep core activation to rotate your rib cage back and away from your pelvis and then down and forward into your pelvis we're now going to reach the right arm across to the left outer left leg and find a rotation bring that right rib cage up and over and then rocking on your left ribs you're going to rock back and forth tiny little movements here but again finding that tilt of the ribs while in a rotation you're going to do this three times on each side finding that movement and then coming back to center with hands behind the head take one more of these rib tilts around your pelvis and then you can roll off of your prop and come up to sitting, removing your prop from your mat. And then we're gonna come to sitting. Now, sitting might be uncomfortable for you. You can put a little folded towel or pillow underneath your sit bones. And if that doesn't feel comfortable, grab a chair or stool and sitting taller, whatever you choose is great and if you're on the floor you can bend your knees a little bit you just want to make sure that that spine remains capable of finding its length we're going to breathe into our length here like we've been doing our depth our width and we're going to make sure that we can feel the rootedness of the pelvis while we rotate so same thing as before when we were on our moving with our ribs we're going to Rest our hands on our thighs, drop the head, and try to rotate your ribs over your pelvis. Now, it's easy to want to collapse and then come forward. We often do that. But can you find your length first? Your width remains. And then, not flattening, but finding this nice, lovely curve that goes up and over your pelvis, not moving your pelvis. Of course, your abdominals, your core has to be engaged here. We're finding length of the spine and a hollowing in the belly. Your hands can slide on your legs, whether they're the thighs while you're sitting or here on the floor. And then you can try lifting the arms up if it's comfortable. You don't have to. Keep them on the toes if not. The arms add an extra weight to your core. So again, if you are sitting, you could just slide the hands down the legs here or reach them forward and rolling up all from the sense of core to spine, front to back, feeling the movement of the ribs over the pelvis. And then can you roll back up to sitting or into your postural height? Do this a few more times, finding the reach forward of the arms and the tilting that goes up and over rather than compressing the spine. And it might not feel like you can go very far. That's totally okay. Now opening up your arms wide, we're gonna rotate the ribs like we did before on the bolster. Reach your right arm to the outside of your left leg and slide forward, reaching towards your pinky toe, although you don't have to reach it. You're gonna roll up in your twist and come back through center. And again, find that rotation of the ribs that's not moving the pelvis. Find that upper body curve that does not collapse the spine. Left arm crosses to outer right. Back arm reaches behind you. Notice how that active arm 
helps you counter the reach forward. And then I invite you to, once you get it, go a little faster. Move through this, but noticing the hips, the pelvis, can you rotate the ribs around the pelvis or do you feel some residual movement? And we're trying to find that counter rotation. You can let that go, you can relax after you've done a few rounds. And then we're gonna bend the knees, getting really tall again, finding your height. With your hands on your knees, you're gonna tilt your whole spine back a little bit so you're on a diagonal. And we're gonna come back again to the pelvis. So now that we have some weight in our core because we're not vertical, we're gonna rock the pelvis like we did when we were on our back. Keep your hands light on your knees. Try that a few times and then come up to sitting. Now we're gonna remove the prop if you had, if you were on um, a little cushion. We're gonna come back into that diagonal reach arms can be on your knees or they can reach forward and we're gonna add the upper body curve that we did when we were seated adding the lower body and the upper body now rotate your ribs by reaching one arm forward pulling one arm toward you see if you can get some nice range of motion there without the pelvis going and then reach both arms forward come up to sitting now that should be a nice strong core workout when you do it we're gonna find that diagonal again do the same position, rocking the pelvis back, the ribs up and forward. So we're shortening in the front, lengthening in the back. And then find that rotation. I'm just trying to reach into space here. One arm folds forward, one arm pulls back. Do it a few times, it should work your core, and then come to rest. Make your way now to hands and knees. We're gonna find a nice neutral, spine which means lengthening the head and the tail apart you can look at my balancing the spine video for more and we're gonna breathe like we did before breathe lengthwise widthwise and depthwise front to back and we're gonna put the, our attention now into that low belly expanding and condensing all while maintaining that nice arm strength pushing strongly into the floor. Then use that hollowing of your belly to find a cat-cow here. Can you engage your core while we shorten the front and lengthen the back into a flexed spine? And then lengthen the front and shorten the back when we come into an extended spine all the while feeling the difference in the space between your ribs and pelvis. How are they moving together? How are they moving apart? And what's their relationship to the front and the back, your core, your spine? Can they be of service to you? Now let's tuck the toes under, roll up to sitting. I'm gonna feel that pelvic tilt first and then the ribs are gonna rotate up on top of them. Taking a moment and then just reverse this. Start with the head, find that up and over feeling of your ribs and then the pelvis will tilt over the legs. You come into that forward fold. You can bend your knees. You don't have to go all the way to the ground and you can roll back up. Now this time, find that roll again. Find the hollowing of the front body as you lengthen the spine, that width of your spine from when we first use our bolster in the beginning. And then walk out into your plank, roll back up, and we'll do it again. You can bring your knees down if that's more comfortable for you. But all the while, whatever you're doing, find the relationship of ribs to pelvis. Can you feel the neutral spine with core engaged in the front, spine engaged in the back? And then coming all the way up to standing. Okay, find your posture. Let's find our breath again. Breathing into the front back, the side side, and the up and down. 
feeling all of your dimensions at once so that you know you are a three-dimensional being. We're going to try our hand at some balancing. So shifting on to one foot, bringing the other right up against your shin. So I'm feeling uh, this little moment of balance where I'm feeling my width. I'm not going to lengthen or shorten one side more than the other, the front or the back. I'm going to try to balance ribs over pelvis and find my tree pose. If you're comfortable with that, stay there. But if you'd like to add a little more challenge, grab a hold of your knee, bring it towards your chest, and cross the opposite hand to the outside of the knee. And if that feels okay, reach back with the other side. Find your twist, the upper body twist, the rib cage rotating around the pelvis. Shake that out. We'll do it the same on the other side. Finding a little mini tree pose balancing on one side, trying to feel front to back, ribs over pelvis, core to spine active. Stay there if you like, or bring that leg up, folding that knee up, reach across with your other arm, holding the thigh up, and then back arm reaches to find the rib rotation around a very quiet pelvis. Hold that as long as you want and shake it out when you're ready. Just give yourself a whole body shake and noticing how you feel. I'm so grateful for you to be here. Thanks for joining me.